Hi everyone! My name is Healy, like the shoes with wheels, if you all remember those. Um, when I was kind of breaking into the UX space and first transitioning from my previous career into um, specifically UX research, I did a ton of YouTube video watching and um, I still do in my current role as a UXR and just find it a really kind of accessible medium to get in, like kind of get connected to people in the industry, get my hands around different concepts, get introduced to things. So I feel like YouTube and podcasts have been both really instrumental in my UX career thus far, which is still relatively new um, past five years or so. Um, but yeah, so this year I wanted to just kind of start sharing my own experiences and advice, knowledge, um, and then hopefully connecting with people in the industry as well, since I have so much to learn and I'm, like I said, just getting started in the grand scheme of things. So um, kind of use this to motivate me to grow my own knowledge base and connect with more folks in the space as well. So really looking forward to connecting with all of you and just sharing kind of my personal story, hearing other people's personal stories and um, shout out to Ayona Talks. Her channel really is what inspired me to kind of share out about the UX space in this way. Um, so definitely go follow her and check out her videos because she is incredible and shares so many great resources for the UXR community and UX as a whole. So with that, I wanted to talk today about my grad school experience. I got my master's this past year in human computer interaction from Carnegie Mellon University in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania in the US. This was a long and um, tough decision to decide to go to this program and then of course applying the application process. I think there's lots of YouTubes of people's application videos that um, I know mine is kind of floating around out there somewhere so you can definitely get into that whole process in a different video um, but I just wanted to talk about kind of my overall experience with that today in case there are people who are thinking about going to grad school who are looking at kind of masters in HCI or at Carnegie Mellon specifically. Um, and like I said, this is just my personal experience, so definitely doesn't represent everyone's experience. And I know that lots of people had different um, experiences or even outcomes of the program. So I'll kind of touch on that too, but just take it with a grain of salt, knowing this is kind of one person's personal experience. So what was the program like? So that is the famous question. It is so hard to sum up, but it's a one year program. So it's extremely intense. You can do it part time, but most people do it full time. And so I actually quit my job and basically used my entire savings, um, got two scholarships, which helped. Um, but it's definitely a financial transition if you are someone who's working full time before going back. Um, and it can be risky for sure. I think some people have really successful outcomes from the program. Other people um, maybe have take a long time to find jobs and that can be really frustrating if you've kind of taken this big risk on the program and then don't feel like you're getting your return on investment. Um, overall though, the exposure that you have to emerging technologies, to people who have experience in the user experience space, to renowned faculty who are experts in their field is unparalleled at Carnegie Mellon. And I do think that is why I chose to go to a program like that. Um, and that's not only to say Carnegie Mellon is the end all be all. I loved it and you know, now I'm a huge fan and Tartan girl, that's our mascot, the Tartan. But there are other really good programs that I think would have different pros over our program. Um, but I would just recommend to go to one of the more kind of reputable programs if you can, where you're going to get that exposure to amazing faculty, to opportunities and other students who are gonna lift you higher. So whether that be, I know like Georgia Tech has a good program, Michigan, um, University of Washington, there's a lot of really great programs. So like I said, there isn't just one option 
and of course take finances into account. Like I said, it, it's a really risky move for people if you are quitting your job, going into debt. Um, so weigh your options and pick what's right for you, absolutely. Um, and like I said, Carnegie Mellon is a, is a big name and has that recognition of a kind of extensive alumni network who have been really influential and successful, but there are other schools that have that as well. Um, so it's, it's definitely not the only one. But overall, that was a huge part of what made it so impactful to me was just um, getting to do things that I wouldn't have done otherwise. So I did research with delivery robots that were deployed in the city of Pittsburgh. A big part of why pilot programs like that come to cities like Pittsburgh are because of our university connections and our university involvement. And so you'll have tons of access to things like robotics because Pittsburgh is kind of a breeding ground, if you will, for emerging technologies like robotics. And you'll just get to explore projects that you really wouldn't in the real world, if you will. I don't like making that distinction, um, but it does kind of feel like academia versus industry is kind of um, a, a divide. And so you just get to do really kind of outlandish and whimsical and really innovative projects that you might not get to do otherwise. You get to use different research methods that you might not get to use in industry, get exposure to a wide variety of tools and skill sets and softwares. Um, and it really kind of helped to propel me into that next stage of my career and also just build my confidence that I have this really robust knowledge and tool set to bring into my next role. So what classes did I take? You take a core curriculum with the MHCI program that you can see if you just look up on their website. Uh, you kind of take an introduction to design and research. Um, you get a little touch into programming, but I would say if you're trying to do UX engineering or um, be more of like a technology focus, so if you're trying to take more coding classes, um, you might want to do a little bit different of a program. I think some people who came into the program wanting to be UX engineers, it felt a little bit light on the programming side, which for most designers and researchers, that was a plus. So just something to think about. Um, I was coming from the coding background, so I did take a class in the computer science school. I brushed up on data structures and algorithms. I took um, human robot interaction, which was extremely beneficial and helpful with learning how to write a really rigorous kind of experimental design and research plan from an academic perspective. Um, I did an independent study for the entire year with two professors who were absolutely wonderful and really they let me and my teammates or my teammates and I drive what we wanted to get out of the, the independent study. So we basically said, you know, we really want to publish a paper. We really want to get exposure to intercept interviews and kind of intercepting pedestrians on the sidewalk and talking to them about their experiences and so forth. And then I took an interactive data science class and I took our capstone project course, which that is kind of the pillar of the MHCI program. And to be honest, I did not really understand why it was such a big deal before I went into the program. And now I think it's definitely one of the parts of the program that make it the most successful and impactful. So it's an eight month long project that you do with five or six of your fellow classmates. So you're on a team, you each have roles um, that you kind of self assign amongst yourselves and you're assigned a client. And so I worked with Honda to address a sort of research problem that they had for an eight month period. And we were given resources by them. We were given guidance by them and met weekly or more than weekly. We got to visit their offices in Ohio. And yeah, we were just given exposure to a lot of really interesting problems and softwares and tools and ways of thinking that we wouldn't have gotten otherwise. And then when I applied for my current job, I actually was able to basically walk through the eight months of work I had done with Honda, all of the research methods I had used, the findings, um, kind of my process with research, my approach, and my tool set, if you will. And 
that was a big part of me getting my current job was kind of having that experience and having applied my learnings in research and design into a real world setting with a real world client. So it's easy, not easy, but it is common, I should say, for um, people to maybe take classes in UX or read articles, watch YouTube videos such as this one, but actually putting those skills into practice in an applied setting is what's gonna set you apart. Um, people want to know that you have done this in an industry setting or industry adjacent setting and you can kind of jump right into your working environment and get started without anyone having to kind of hold your hand through the process. So now I work full time as a UX researcher for a cybersecurity company. Um, a lot of my work is really collaborative with engineering, with product managers, and I work with about 15 other researchers in the company, um, but we all kind of focus on different product areas. So that that's kind of the sweet spot for me that I was looking for was I didn't want to be the only researcher at a company. I knew that I needed that mentorship still. I love having other researchers to kind of bounce ideas off of, review my work, um, help formulate research plans and so forth. But I also knew that I didn't want to be a really tiny fish in a huge pond. So like 200 researchers or more at a company because I wanted to be able to touch more parts of the process and just kind of learn um, what I do like, what I don't like, maybe even what parts of the research process or what stages of research or product development I wanted to be on. So I'm really excited about my, my current role and I definitely don't think that I could have gotten there without um, CMU MHCI. Although never say never, but I don't think that I could have made the transition or the pivot as smoothly and as quickly as I did since it is just a one year program. It is pretty wild sometimes to think about um, the fact that I was working as a UX engineer just two years ago and now I do research full time and my engineering days feel like, you know, a different chapter. So I hope that was helpful. I'm happy to um, answer questions in the comments and definitely want to share more um, videos and content around the UX space. So if there's other topics that you would want to hear about, whether that's methodologies, job hunting, what a day in the life of a UX researcher is, those are all things that I'm excited to explore and connect with other people on and just figure out um, how to keep growing this industry, kind of spreading the knowledge of how to get into user experience because it is a really important and really fulfilling field to be in. Um, so yeah, I just wanna help other people since people have helped me along the way in my journey. So hope you all have a great day and I'll see you soon.